So CoffeeZilla is back to posting consistently, and I wanted to cover this real quick in today's video because I feel vindicated for the things that I've been talking about for literally the last two years, like literally. So two years ago in 2022, I was making videos about Graham Stephan and Andre Jake and talking about the fact that I really don't like what they're doing, and it shows that they know nothing about the markets or finance because – Whatever happens on a day-to-day -day period, they will make videos, these these clickbaity, fear-mongering videos to make you think that the world is going to end because maybe there's like one bad headline in CNBC or something like that, which if you know anything about finance, it's it just the market doesn't really work like that. It's not a day-to-day, -day, the sky's falling or this is happening and sentiment is this and all that. And, and CoffeeZilla is finally calling it out. Uh, he posted this tweet making fun of Andre Jick, and you can see he's got the emojis where... You know, in his emojis, he's got the charts where one day it's up, next day it's down, next day it's down, the other day it's up, then down, then up, then down, then it's down, 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 then it's up. It's just all this crazy stuff. It's like, dude, make up your mind. And this used to annoy me about me, Kevin, because me, Kevin, would do the same thing. And he built a huge following doing this. Now, the unfortunate part about it is, from an integrity perspective, um, clearly these guys don't care about that. These guys don't care about actually being decent, actually giving good information. All they care about is getting views and basically copying, uh, you know, CNBC articles, which is really all these YouTubers do. I swear, especially Andre Jake. All this guy does is copy news articles. If you don't believe me, go look up uh, CoffeeZilla's video that he made like three years ago where he literally exposed the fact that Andre Jake copied the CNBC article. Like this is literally all these guys do. So just to zoom in. So one day ago, he says new record. Stocks just peak. Do this now. But four days before that, he said stock market all time high U.S. economy on an unsustainable path. That was just four days ago. So so which one is it? You know, and then he's got the, you know, the crazy face with the down arrow. Then before that, he said it started huge layoffs, banks in trouble and interest rates are high. But then the video before that one, like a week ago. He said 2024 Bitcoin price prediction, crazy. Then he's got the green chart going up with Bitcoin at 150000 in his thumbnail. And it's, it's like, bro, make up your mind. Then he says, I bought 10 Bitcoin ETFs, ranking them worst to best. But then before that, he said, game over, Bitcoin ETF approved. And then, you know, basically, you know, there's no point in me going over every single video. I think you guys get the point. But the reason why I want to cover this is because I have been talking about this Two years ago, I've been said this. I've been said I don't understand why people listen to Graham Stephan and Andre Jick. Again, if you find them entertaining and you just like the videos, that's fine. But I know that's not fully the case. A lot of people really think that these guys are finance gurus and really think that they know what they're talking about. And so they put you on this crazy roller coaster messing with your mental where you're out here thinking that, oh, my God, Andre Jick said that the market's great. I'm happy. Oh, crap. Andre Jick said that the layoffs have started. The market's bad. It's like you got to be really careful with this fear mongering crap. And you're really better off just learning about the market and learning about finance on your own. If you want to know how to do that, um, Twitter is a great resource. There are some great accounts that you could follow. I can't think of them off the top of my head, but if you like ask in the comments, I can find them and let you know. But there's a bunch of accounts I follow on Twitter of people who actually give really good information and have been, you know, economists or worked in finance for a long time who don't do all this fear mongering stuff. You know, when you listen to somebody, if they are giving you legit information, they have like backup behind it and they're not flip flopping every day saying that, oh, you know, one day it's bad, one day it's good. Just just basically going with how the market goes. I think that's stupid because what we know about the stock market is it fluctuates. What we know about the co the finance community is it fluctuates. So if you see people going, you know, one day Bitcoin's up, it's going to the moon. And then the next day, oh, we're unemployed. Everybody's going to die. It's like you just have to be very careful with that. And the other thing I want to say, too, is what really scares me. About the fact that all of these guys have huge followings. This is what really scares me. And I don't understand why this is. But I don't know if you guys have noticed this. There are actually a decent amount of people with actual finance backgrounds who have YouTube channels. And they get no views. And, and I understand. They're boring. So so I get it. But, but still, just bear with me here. I get that they're boring. But still, they have actual finance backgrounds and they know what they're talking about. It blows my mind that the biggest people in finance YouTube do not have a finance background at all it is so scary to me you are literally taking advice from somebody who half these guys didn't even go to college you know like let's take Andre Jig Andre Jig before he got on YouTube used to be a gosh dang magician 
the guy was going up to people on the street saying, pick a card, <laughs> you know, like pick a card. Is this your card? Yeah, that guy. <laughs> The man was literally a mime. Like it's just like it's just crazy. Like these are the types of people. The man was a magician. Randomly became a finance YouTuber. Has like two million subscribers, getting all these views, and it's just crazy. It's like you guys never just sit and think about the like, holy cow! I'm really taking financial advice from a magician. Not to mention, same guy that told you Bitcoin was going to 100 thousand like two years ago never ended up happening. And then Bitcoin still isn't there. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like Bitcoin. I want to make that very clear. I do like Bitcoin, but I don't like these pumpers who lie to you and tell you crazy things like Bitcoin is going to 100,000. And then when Bitcoin didn't do it, he completely stopped talking about it. He he went like the entire 2023 of not making one video about Bitcoin. It was absolutely insane. Let me also remind you that this guy got sued for promoting FTX along with Graham Stephan and Jeremy and me, Kevin and Tom Nash and all these other people. He was a part of that big FTX lawsuit. And I know a bunch of them settled. I don't know if he did, but I know a few of the other guys settled like me, Kevin and uh, people like that. But yeah, it's just great to see CoffeeZilla uh, calling this guy out because he, he really is terrible. And I hope that CoffeeZilla makes a video on him. I think if CoffeeZilla, I mean, he doesn't have to make a full in-depth investigation video because, you know, I'm not saying that Andre Jick is full on a scammer. You know, I'm not saying that. So he doesn't have to do that. But I definitely think that there are some big issues with this channel and I do not trust this guy at all. And CoffeeZilla does have a second channel. Here it is right here. CoffeeZilla made a second channel, which I think was a great idea by him, where basically instead of making these super well-edited, highly investigated, well-researched videos that he normally makes, which probably takes some months to make, he's like, let me find another way to bring in some extra revenue. Well, since I have a big name and people are going to click on basically whatever because they like me, let me just start making videos where I just talk on the camera. And he started doing that. So now he's making these videos where he's just kind of covering whatever he wants to cover. And I hope he makes a video on this channel where he just kind of goes after Andre Jig because I feel like a guy with his channel size might – do a better job bringing across the point that I've been trying to bring because obviously I'm a smaller channel. So there's not too many people listening to me, but the same thing this guy is saying about Andre Jake, I've been saying for years now. So it's good to see these finally doing it. Hopefully he makes a video about it because you know, Andre Jake's just the worst of the worst. I mean, there's no other way uh, to say it. And I don't really like Graham either. I mean, I don't think Graham is the worst guy ever. But I think the problem with these finance channels is they do a lot of fear mongering and a lot of what they're doing is strictly just like it's like entertainment and bad advice as opposed to like actual genuine uh, good advice that will actually help people. It's just all this fear mongering crap. And it's terrible because I don't think these guys understand or I'm sure they do. I mean, actually, I'm sure they do understand that there are a lot of people out there that really take what these guys say to heart. They really believe every word that these guys say. And if you say all this flip floppy stuff. Like green, red, green, red, we're all going to die, we're all going to live, World War Three. never mind, World War Three is not going to have all this crap that they're doing in these titles and these videos. It, it, it's not good for your fan base. Like, just pick a side and stick with it. Do you think that things are going to be good going forward or bad? Just pick that, stick with it, stop the flip-floppy crap, and stop taking financial advice from a magician too, <laughs> okay? All right, anyway, that's today's video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.